Who there? Hey there, Mark. You're live here on Facebook on the uh, the Woke Up Live Facebook page. How you doing there? See, so you got your mask on. Hey, hey, what's shaking? Sorry, let me go to a, a good area. I sure. can take this puppy off and uh, really get still. Get into it. It Sorry. looks like you're in scrubs, kind of. Oh, really? Oh, good. A little bit. You look like a nurse, a male I'm nurse. A hero. Yes, you yeah. are. We're uh, uh, we don't have masks on, and we're from Florida, so that kind of makes sense. Uh, <laughs> I only do it because I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you'll yelled get at yelled at. Times. Oh you yeah, you'll be yelled at. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to spread it either, but uh, mostly because I don't want to get yelled at. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean that. That's like it's peer pressure, but it's like a positive peer pressure, right? You know. Right. Right. Like, don't smoke or uh, you know wear a condom. <laughs> well one of those right. things i don't do so what uh what are you, what's up with you guys where tell me a little bit about yourself where are you who's gay what's gay who's shaking <laughs> what's what drugs are you doing talk to me so <laughs> it's mostly weed but uh oh uh, nice we're we're in melbourne um still still exploring our sexuality but um there you had go. a lot of time to think about it <laughs> uh -huh. yeah how about you what are you up to right now uh well i'm doing this pod i'm in the west village in manhattan uh it's, mm. the, uh, it's new york is beautiful weather and uh everybody's kind of relaxed and we had a horrible covid out of the gate and i feel like it's almost like food poisoning like we had it hard up front <clears throat> and everybody made fun of us and now uh now they're the ones shitting water down south yeah. yeah. So, so is everything pretty much like back to normal up there now? And now you guys are locking everyone else out from getting into the city or not, has that not happened yet? Well, now we're, since it's going well, now we're too scared to let up because we're scared it'll go right back. So mm -hmm. the restaurants are still closed and the bars are closed, but they do all the takeout and the, the to, to go drinks and everybody's boozing up on the street now. They let us do that. <laughs> it's like New Orleans now. It is. Yeah. It's like Bourbon Street. Except we have this Puerto Ricans here. And, uh, <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's cool. It's cool here now. I mean, you know, a couple of months ago, it was the scariest place on the planet. Yeah, yep. They're like, uh, like trucks full of bodies just driving around all over the place and it's people running crazy around. Crazy in New York. Yeah. I mean, they made, it, they made it look worse on the news, but uh, it was pretty rough, definitely. So are more people out now? Like, do you see oh, more yeah. people on the streets? Yeah. So oh, it's, yeah. they're coming around. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. You throw the mask on. Yeah. Yeah. Social dist. And yeah, everybody's jogging, walking the dog, you know, heroin. Good time. <laughs> are the, uh, Back to normal. Yeah. Are you guys still doing the, the outside uh, drive in comedy shows? Not really. I, I I think there's a couple, but they're not very popular. And uh, <laughs> do they work? Do you think they work, Mark? Ah, like... uh, it's not as good. I did one last week at the stand. They had one kind of like in their front sidewalk area, which is with tables out there, and it's a it, you don't connect. Like you might get right, a good right. laugh, and then you lose them for a minute. Then you kind of get another. Everything has to be a huge pop in order to feel like a real laugh. Otherwise, they get lost with no roof and no walls, you know? Mm -hmm. It's so open. It's just not, yeah. it's not good for comedy. And it's easy to detach. Like with comedy, you got to be, it's almost like a movie where you're in the theater, it's dark, and you're focused. And comedy yep. has the same thing where, you know, a fly comes at you, and now you're doing this shit, and a, 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 car, a car horn honks a mile away, and the mouse queefs. Everything, everything screws the pooch. And so it's hard to focus like you need to. Mm -hmm. on comedy what do you think the future of comedy holds if this this persists and, and comedy clubs are not allowed to open for another few months wait are we on or are we just bullshit oh no we're on sorry we can oh, be on. okay yeah. Yeah, yeah i yeah. didn't know i didn't know this we is gold mar oh i don't know about gold but we'll say we're on. <laughs> but uh yeah. uh yeah so the future is is bleak i think it's mm. guys like it's podcasts it's uh, videos, it's, it's sketches, it's, it's, I think with like Tim Dillon or Andrew Schultz or, or oh, guys like that, it. killing it. I mean, he's on another level, the Schultz Fuck, scene, man. Yeah. he's like putting out this, these news things and it's the only honest bit of news you can find. Everything else is so, you know, on this exactly. side and that side, you can't get yeah. a read on anything. And 
He'll just have he little things point. in there. Yeah, he has little things in there where you're like, yes, I've thought that. I was too scared to say it, but mm-hmm. and he goes you know, at both so sides. Fucking scared. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Why is that so hard? I mean, I'm it's just... impossible. Oh, sorry, sir. I'm people sit- have their. Oh, okay. uh, seems like other people right. have their motivations, or they have their incentives, or yeah. you know whatever sponsors, or, or somebody's telling them what perspective they're supposed to have. I feel like. Yeah, well, that's the weird thing. Look, I'm a liberal, libtard, cuck bitch lefty <laughs> homo whatever you want to call no me play. yeah snowflake whatever it is all the words but uh i i get embarrassed by the left all the time and i'm like well this is weird I mean, that was dumb and then and then the right does something crazy and they call out the right hard which i'm like all right that's great that was a weird thing they did but then when mm-hmm. the left does something great they don't even acknowledge it i'm like so are you just gonna lie and act like that never yeah. happened or are we am i going crazy or am i stupid are you stupid are you are you just full of shit are you phony baloney so that's where you're like just because you're on the left doesn't mean you know if my brother does something stupid i'm he's still my brother but i'm like hey you're yeah. an idiot you know right like, yeah i don't people get don't like to think for themselves for right now it's very one yeah, camp they, or the other camp they don't and if, if you do it you're fucked Yep. Yeah, we're 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 on the left also, and I'm I'm going to be voting for Biden. But at the same time, it's like I not going to not acknowledge the fact that he's got rape allegations against him. It's like, are <laughs> yeah. we going to believe all women? Like... Or are we not going to believe all women? You know, exactly. Everyone is convenient. Exactly. Doesn't he just sniff people? I think he just sniffs and touches. Uh, yeah. No, the that's t- what I uh, heard. Tara Reid or something like that, right? Oh, oh so. yeah, she was good in American Pie. But <laughs> but the point is, odd nipples. Yeah, like, can't we all just okay? They're both a bunch of weirdos. Biden's he he needs a uh, autocorrect just for talking. I don't even know what the hell he's saying, <laughs> and he's a little kooky. And but that's fine. Whatever. He's ninety thousand years old. But like, can't we just acknowledge that? Like, he's there. He exists. What's the difference? You know. Mm-hmm. But I, I don't know. And then then it's like believe all women. You're like, okay, well, I'm, I support women. I'm I'm a fan of the ladies. But then if a woman says actually that woman's lying about the rape. It never happened. Now, do we believe her? How can you believe both right. women? They're having opposing opinions and you want to do the right thing and help everybody. But like by your crazy slogan, that's insanely uh, like <laughs> dangerous broad and broad, one-sided and dangerous. It's just like, it's so paint with a broad brush, no pun intended, but it's just like, believe them all. <laughs> like, all right. So, and I, I like, right. I'm not trying to be a cunt here, but it's just no. like, so I, do I believe the one who says it's false or do I believe the one who said it's real? You, you paint like, yourself uh, into a bullshit corner here. Yeah, yeah right. I like Bill Burr, Bill Burr when he said, what happened to due process? Like, why is, wow, that, a, why is yeah. that a bad thing now? Why is that? Right. I um, agree. It's straight. And here, here's the one that gets me. And tell me what you kooks think of this, because I think there's like 38 guys watching here. But uh, <laughs> I can't keep all track. Dudes. All dudes. Um, okay, but I, I can't tell how many there are. But either way, I sound like... Uh, I'm in an orgy with a blindfold on, but either way, <laughs> what what is up with the thing of uh, I see this on Twitter a lot from the left is uh, the cancel culture doesn't exist, and I'm like, what are you kidding? That's all we talk about. It had right. Jimmy Fallon's on on the chopping block. Now Jimmy Kimmel, then Tina Fey, and then yeah. uh, Trump, and then Joe Biden, and then like that's all we talk about is canceling. Like Hamilton yeah. is about to be canceled. Like, what do you mean it doesn't Everyone's exist? Everyone's on notice. Yeah, yeah we're all terrified every word i say i'm like was that cancelable am i cancelable I'm like that's all we talk well, how, you, how can you say it doesn't exist you're kind of safe mark right because i mean you put no. out your own podcast right and no, you put out your own you. they can, can they get you, you? yeah they yeah. can all get like anybody can be gotten that that whole thing of like i got a pirate ship but i can do what i want i'm online i'm on youtube so i mean yeah. they can get you arrested they can they can like stop people from working i mean if you want to be a cartoon zebra in a pixar movie in 10 <laughs> yeah. years that's gone it's not happening to them. Now. yeah so, they so wh- wh- where did you see that they're trying to cancel or they're denying cancel culture i see that every day on twitter it's always oh, like really? oh shut up that's fake that doesn't that's not real i'm like well, i'm not talking that's about bigfoot is that what that is well yeah if someone tells you that something doesn't exist and it's just a figment of your imagination trying to make you seem like you're crazy that's gaslighting basically right? oh is that what yeah i thought that was a concentration camp thing. <laughs> i didn't know but, uh uh see i'm on a, i'm sitting on the steps of a temple so that might have been a little much <laughs> but uh jewish temple here but yeah well, wow, there's no that, hell uh, yeah that's a good point and uh pork apparently or foreskin yeah. but uh, weird religion 
they're all weird. They're all silly. But I feel like, you know, I hate to be that guy, but it feels like this wokiness is becoming a religion. Oh, for, for some, for sure. And I think that's where, like, there's the fringe extreme extremes on either side where I feel like the rational ones of us, we just kind of got to be able to tune those out and not be distracted. <laughs> Sorry about not, that. Not, not get distracted. Out. I thought yeah. it was like that weird dog from Ghostbusters there for a second. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Rick Moranis, who brought the dog? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, no, I think you're right. But the thing about tuning out is, like, you try to stay sane. You try to stay realistic. And then, then like, you could lose yeah. your job if you tweet something. Uh. I, uh, I so maybe you gotta dip something. your toes in every once in a while. Dip I your toes guess. into the extreme waters, and then get out as quick as you can, dry off, and then. I know. yeah, I guess you're right, but I, you know, you, you heard about uh, Jenny Slate with the um, with the, uh, Big the mouth. voice actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. so stupid. So she quit her job, whatever you know, like whatever. I get it. She's putting her money where her mouth is, at least. But like, first yeah. of all, Big why mouth. now? Why why did you why did you not just not take the gig? Like all of a sudden, you care about black black uh jobs like mm -hmm. it feels a little convenient feels a little yeah. timely and it then, feels good for them to speak up and you know yeah. voice their and also their are, you just covering your, are you just covering your ass because you know you'll probably get yelled at later about this mm -hmm. so you get to jump ahead of it and be the hero who quits yep but yep. you know whatever her, her point is but i feel like oh shit i forgot my dumb point god i gotta stop yeah i feel like uh the, the, there's a lot of people <laughs> that are just now realizing and, and focusing on all these issues. And before everyone's busy with work and everything that's right. going on. And now with right. the, the COVID, everyone has time to really focus on these issues. And they're like, wait, what, a, wait a minute. What, what's been going on all this time? I guess, are people really upset about that's that the kind thing. of shit? Are like, they I, upset I, about Aunt, who's upset about Aunt Jemima? Are they marching <laughs> on the streets? Like pissed I, off I about syrup? Well, a friend of mine, comic black woman, uh, she had a great tweet where she was like, look, Aunt Jemima, Big Mouth, Cleveland, Uncle Ben, whatever the fuck it is. These are just symbols. And they're, there's actual symptoms of racism that we're trying. We're not right. out in the streets going Jemima, Big Mouth, you know, like <laughs> we're just it's very like elitist white privilege way of feeling better. Like, oh, well, we'll get rid of that syrup or fuck yeah. her, you know, it's like superficial. Brown. It's superficial. And it's really more for you at the end of the day. It's self-serving yourself you're just jerking your own asshole yeah. instead of actually yeah flint has dirty water like go help them or go i don't know it just feels and these actors with the imagine and the uh oh the gosh whole thing like it's so cringy Vomit. and you're like you guys are so out to lunch you don't even get what, how dumb you seem and no I know you, idea. Your, your heart's in the right place but jesus uh. christ you twats Ugh. I am responsible. He ah. was tearing up that piece of shit. I, you know, I know. it's great. I would you him. be would you be heartbroken if like a bunch of your friends did a video like that and oh, posted I'd it? Be, I'd be crushed <laughs> because I, I would be more sad because you're losing the reality. Your friends are losing the reality of the situation. Like I get what they're they're the hearts in the right place. They're trying to do some good or whatever, but it just shows that you're completely you're like gone off into the own cornfield yeah like you're you're you know what's that movie where uh it's like you've become a zombie now and you're like hey buddy and he turns around he's got no eyeballs and <laughs> tongue's hanging out and you're like oh no they got you too you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what walking dead like. yeah yeah oh yeah so, it's basically a... what it is and i look i hate talking about it because i always bring this shit up and it's mind-boggling i'm just i keep waiting for it to end i thought covid because you always heard we got no problems. That's that's what's wrong with America. We used to have a war every 10 years. We used to, you know, people were starving. Mm -hmm. We had this, we had that. And now you got Uber Eats and you got uh, an electric car and you got, you can change the channel with your asshole and all this mm -hmm. shit. And <laughs> it turns out it was having no problems. Like all we have is time now. No one has a job. So mm -hmm. that made it worse. I thought, like I thought we'd be like, oh, we'd be, we're going to be busy with this COVID shit trying to right. save our grandma. But it's probably a culmination of things. I mean, first of all, for sure, uh, George Floyd was was a, a huge moment that or catalyst. But also, yeah, I feel like us, you know, President Trump doing addresses every single day def definitely didn't help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Totally. You know, because then we, it, it, I think I feel like it brought to everyone's attention that we don't really have good leadership. It's, it seems, you know, wow, like, I think we're we knew on that. our own. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I hope he loses just so we can move on with our goddamn lives, you know? Like, it looks pretty good. You think? Right now. Yeah. I mean, okay. the, I mean, it could change. It's, for, you know, yeah. only four or five months. We still have five months, but it looks, the polls are crazy. He's like getting crushed in all five states that he needs oh. to win. Oh, yeah, great. so okay. it looks good, but that's you know, you know, a lot we, can we, change. They said it looked good last time too, so yeah, yeah, that's true. That's well, very the, true. The good news is, and this is going to sound bad, and they can they're going to use this soundbite against me, but <laughs> if all these like racist good old boys or whoever you want to call them, it's good that we got another old honky on the uh, on the chopping block because they won't feel as reluctant to vote right. for him. You know, if it's like a black guy or a woman or even a Jew or an Asian guy, that was my vote. Yang. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, nice and safe. Yeah, yeah, but it, it's it, it's still a white guy, so even a racist yeah. could still potentially vote for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. We needed an old white dude that uh, that's is a generic. He's perfect, old generic, yeah, little creepy white dude. It's, it's what we need. This there year is full go. of really weird, creepy silver linings, I guess, and that's. Yeah, that's his hair hair product. It's called <laughs> yeah. silver lining. But yeah. So what do you what are your uh, thoughts on the 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 coronavirus as far as like traveling? Because I know you've you've just did a few gigs out of state and all that. How'd that go? Uh, it was all great. I mean, it's fifty percent capacity, and uh, you know everything's weird now. There's like a whole thing in the air, and I get it. It's a pandemic. It's a virus, but. I did a gig in Texas and like the week after Texas was considered spiking and all that. And my opener got COVID and mm. like we hung out in the green room. We were doing uh, arm wrestling, noogieing. I blew up like, we're drinking <laughs> off of the same shit. We're, we're eating off Fearless. the same plate. Yeah. We, you know, I, I didn't even think about it because he's healthy. I'm healthy. Well, he's 32 uh, years old, whatever it is. And he got COVID and I'm talking, he got killed. Like, Four mm. times going back to the hospital, hocking up blood, shitting water, Ooh, like, geez, fever, gosh. and, you know, the whole thing, emphysema, leukemia, whatever the hell, mesothelioma, he got all that shit. And, Jeez. Drama. And, uh, I, you know, he's finally coming out of it, but that was like 12 days ago. So he's had it this mm. whole time. So I was like, I, I must have had it. And I, I feel fine. And my friend was with me. He opened on the show, too. He didn't get it. He got tested. So it almost feels like if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And if you're not, you're not. Even if you drink a COVID smoothie, you might not get it, I think. But some people just will get it no matter what. So yeah, who well, knows? I, think, I mean, the news think, is different every day. I feel like uh, it seems like Brian Callen and Brendan Schaub had a COVID smoothie. It seems like in uh, Texas when they went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They were pretty brazen, it seems like. I was still, you know, trying to throw a mask on. And I stayed in the hotel room most of the time. But they seemed like they were, you know getting whores and you know uh, <laughs> doing body going shots. ice skating yeah yeah they were they were playing uh twister and shit <laughs> looking <laughs> sucking each other's buttholes but they got a lot yeah. of shit they got a lot of shit for that on um, yeah, I, was, yeah. I was looking at the comments uh and geez fuck they got they got ripped apart oh Instagram. well they they always do i don't know what is up with their fans because their fans listen to them they watch <laughs> everything they do they go to all their shows they listen to every podcast and then they they shit on them all day long on twitter and reddit it's so and true what, what is up with the the fighter and the kid people they just they're so mean yeah, yeah i guess that's just their thing but yeah it's I their mean, thing. They're, they're, they're all roided up apparently there, i think maybe. <laughs> yes i guess <laughs> i mean i did their pod and they were nice to me but i think I read the comments and I had to turn it off because I was like, I don't know when this is going to turn towards me, but it, it's not going to be pretty. Right, right. Just don't, just don't pass out on stage like a DL. She oh did, God, did right. that's oh, crazy, huh? Yeah, yeah, dude, his body. Thank God for his bodyguard who caught like he I was know. ready. He like dove in. That totally. was pretty impressive. <laughs> do you yeah, have any so, gig? Yeah. Do you have any gigs lined up that you're planning on still traveling to, or are you taking it easy, taking it cautious? I what do, you do but I, I cancel most of them just because I was trying to, you know, not get in trouble or not kill anybody or not get killed. But uh, I still have some in, you know, later July that are up in the air. So we'll see what yeah. happens. But you're coming right. back it to is different every day, right? Oh, sorry. I am. That, that's not till uh, like January. So we got some oh, time. Okay. All right. But Bert Kreischer has figured it all out. He's doing drive-ins and. 
he's still mm. making a buck and doing the road. So well done on Bert. Yeah, yeah man. If, yeah. if drive throughs and, and the parking lot shows are, they're better than nothing, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah exactly. Zoom, Zoom shows are better than nothing. You know, they do the trick. I, I barely, <laughs> barely. It's barely, the methadone yeah. of, of heroin. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, exactly. It's, it's the, like finding a little bit of crack on the floor and like, yes, trying to get, trying yes. to get high. Right, yeah. right. You got that roach flip <laughs> going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so how were the audience, like, did you have to kind of warm them up back into, like, laughing at terrible shit again? Or were they, like, ready to laugh? Like, was it- They were ready. They were, I think they were craving it because, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. if you're coming out during that shit, you're, you're wanting to see some comedy. Like, it'd be weird if exactly. you were like, I'm upset by that. <laughs> like, what are you kidding? You, you risked your life to be here and you're worried about a retard joke, you know? <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, they were ready and they were loving it. And they, I went pretty dark and they were into it. Yeah, man. I saw the uh, mini doc that you did uh, getting back out there. And it was oh, so thanks. cool. To, yeah, man. It was so cool to see like your nervousness before the show. And then when you're <laughs> at the end, like when you're on the roof, like that high, that I could tell you had that performance high and like, yes, fuck, I m- yes. miss that. I miss that so much. Totally, it's man. It all comes back and you realize that's the one thing about the pandemic. You realize how lucky we are to be able to do this and how cool of a job it is. And I also think that's why so many people want to, you know, kill, kill comics and cancel comics because it's a badass gig and they're like, fuck this guy's a pedophile or whatever. And he gets to get applause when he walks on stage. Like, well, that's, that's not right. Cause you notice yeah, they never canceled job. plumbers. Well, they right, never, right, it is right. a job, but we're lucky, but we had to work for it. We had to give mm. up and sacrifice and, you know, yeah. plow through hell for years, but like they never canceled plumbers or uh, fishermen or mechanics, you know, mm-hmm. it's more fun to bring someone down. That's high up. Like It is. You know I mean? It is. Yes. Completely. I- I never understood why people can't separate the comedy from somebody like, like so, suddenly it's like, you know, with, with, with Dalia, for example, all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, I never thought he was funny. Oh, it's like, yeah, well, clearly, yeah. clearly millions of people thought he was funny this whole time. And like, uh, were you guys lying to yourselves or? <laughs> I mean, he had a no, good podcast. No. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's good on the mic. Uh, he wasn't my cup of jizz either, but like, yeah. Oh, you don't I like Dane Cook? Was... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought that was strange ah. too, and it was also very. It was my friend calls it green lighting. Like, oh, okay, he's a piece of shit, so we can just totally ruin him. Like, we can go Pile all it in. on. Pile yeah. it on, baby. It's a it's a green light to just go hard. Man, and his friends jump ship right away. I know, I know, and I didn't know him really. Like, I've said hi to him twice in my life, so I don't know the 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 whole thing. But yeah, that was ugly, man. That was real, real ugly, and. People get so much joy out of that. Like whether he did whatever or whatever he did, I don't even know. I don't want to know. I don't want to get involved. But like, even if, even when like the most compassionate quote unquote, open-minded people, when, when the floodgates open up for hate, they go all in. And I'm like, I thought you were against hate. You know, I thought it was all about love and we're all going to coexist and get through this together and equality. But Mm -hmm. then you guys are really foaming at the mouth when it comes to uh, ruining a guy's life. It's like their birthday when something like yes, that happens. Yes, yes. Which, <laughs> look, if a guy punches my mom in the face, I'm gonna kick him in the balls and and try to break his skull and all that. But like, that's different than a comedian you don't like. I don't know. It just seems, it seems think, weird the glee they get from it. Mm, that might be the problem right. with with Twitter being not face to face type of interaction. Of course, you're separated. Of it's like the person who is operating the drone in Arizona that's blowing up someplace in Afghanistan. There's that disconnect where you don't feel right. like you're actually impacting somebody. Right. Where if you're face right. to face and you can see the look in their eyes, you'll most yeah, likely it's come like to that, an understanding. It's like that Louis bit. Yeah, yeah, you can't see the hurt like when you're texting. It's like, yes, um, yes, yeah. completely. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. And I just think it's so, I have a theory. This is my big philosophy on people and life and anal and jizz and the whole thing is that everybody evens out look at bill cosby if you're gonna go so hard with purity and don't curse and pull your pants up and you know family man i'm in a sweater i'm a, i'm a perfect gentleman or whatever and then cut to he's raping 40 women a year or whatever the hell with drugs and this and that so like 
it's weird because you it's almost the gay the the guy who hates gays the the westboro baptist church guy oh gays are they're all going to hell and blah 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 and they're evil and they're they're sinning and then he's blowing people under the table on saturday you know and right, I think right, right. everybody evens out in life everybody if you go high up this way you're gonna go real low that way and i think a lot of these super compassionate people i think a lot of them are fucking evil and twisted and have a lot of skeletons and this is kind of how they even out they go hard mm-hmm. on the blm they go hard yes on the woke shit but they're actually very evil in in other facets of their life and you see that with the with the uh, ruining people, with the tweeting and the, you know, even with like the Trump stuff, like I hope he dies. And like, look, I don't like Trump, but you shouldn't wish death on people. I don't know. It's pretty yeah, harsh. No, and they go yeah. hard on his kid, the autistic baron, whatever his name is. I don't know. It just, <laughs> it, it's, I don't know. It seems. Uh, it's it the seems place a to be mean. Yeah. The it's internet the is the place mean. to be a dick yeah. and and to emotionally disconnect from it and just it, there's just like no maturity. People. No maturity. Yes, it's kids. It's very kid like. You know, like get rid of all the police. Like what? Yeah. What do you mean get rid of the police? You're the first person to call the police when you see a brown guy at your cookout. You know, like the people who, who all, all of a right. sudden hate the police the most that I know when. When they see a, a scary guy, they're the first ones to call him. That's another good know. Schultz bit. Uh, Schultz What's was that? saying that, like, you can't uh, stop white people, stop pretending you're the most upset. Like, oh, it's, yeah. it's well, phony. That's a big one. That's a given. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, yeah, that's the problem is white people want to make everything about them, even even black issues. They want to make it about them, too. It seems like, right. I don't know. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. They're gentrifying <laughs> oppression. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's a bummer. Damn it's all a shame. bummer. So uh, uh, out to launch two million oh, views. Hey. By the way, congrats. That's something hey. else. Less than two months, baby. Yeah, Very man. Exciting. Is that a, is that so, double platinum or is that diamond? I forget. How's that work? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I, I think it's a blue chew. I don't know what what <laughs> level of uh, element we're at here, but yeah, yeah, it's exciting, and I hope it keeps going. And new, Fuck yeah. you know how I you know I know new people are finding me, which is always a great feeling. Is a uh, They'll write, did he say Kevin Hart at the end? And I'm like, oh, this guy doesn't know me at all. I do that after every show on every yeah. TV thing. So that's how I know I got a new fan. Where did it's that come great... from, by the way? Oh, uh, everybody asks me that, and they're always <laughs> disappointed with the answer. Yeah, but maybe. it's literally, I was bombing so much as a, you know, a new young comic. And I would just be like, I, I didn't want to say my name here. It's so I'm so embarrassed. I'm Mark Norman. Have a good night. But uh, I would just say, I'm Kevin Hart. Blow me. Who cares? You know, what the fuck? <laughs> What's the difference anyway? That sucked. And <laughs> and then I like the idea of a bunch of Norwegians being like, well, we saw this Kevin Hart guy for ten dollars. He sucked. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just got a kick out of it. And I said, what if I did that on on Conan? That would be kind of funny. And, you know, it doesn't get a laugh or anything, but it's funny to me. And uh, I did on Conan and nobody yelled at me. And I said, oh, maybe I'll do it on Fallon. And nobody yelled at me. And I just, it just stuck. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that was uh, that was a really great special too, man. I really thoroughly in, 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 enjoyed that. It's really, so, ah, really fucking funny. So tight, Dan, did man. you Did you film in knowing that you're going to release it yourself to YouTube? Or did you try to shop it around at first? Or? Well, that's that's the funny thing is everybody's like, good for you you put it on youtube for the people it's free and i'm like hey trust me i tried to make as much money as possible i I did this for i didn't do this for you i was being selfish the whole time and the only reason it's on youtube is because i couldn't get a buyer and i was desperate and this was the last literally the last resort so uh yeah i knew going in i tried everywhere and i i mean this hour and here's the irony of it not being able to sell it was what made it as good as it got like it's so long and drawn out and every joke pops because i couldn't sell it so i just had to keep doing it on the road because i was like well if no one's seen it yet i'll just keep doing it and it just got tighter and tighter and tighter and then eventually i did a couple of rogans and some other stuff and i kind of got a little little steam going and i sold out two shows at a theater in la and i said fuck it let's just film it here on a whim and we called a few people with, with 4K cameras and a couple of nerds came in to the sound booth and that was we got it. And that was it. Damn. Awesome. You want you want to talk about your outfit there uh, that you had on the special or <laughs> sure, I mean kidding. really? <laughs> yeah, obviously it was uh, I was living out of a suitcase because I was in LA. I'm a New York guy and uh, 
I had a pair of khaki pants and white shoes and I, I, my shirt had a stain on it. So I buttoned up my Herschel jacket <laughs> and uh, that was it. And you're one of uh, my favorite guests on Rogan too. I just love the, oh, the back and thanks. forth you guys have. And you kind of, yes. it seems like you go at him a little bit and he's kind of like, it seems like you take <laughs> him off guard a little bit when you, you know, you call him fatty and stuff. <laughs> well, he's uh, I, I, I love the guy. I don't know if he's even listening. So I have to just kind of keep, keep poking the bear a little bit and nobody pokes him. So I think people get a kick out of that. I mean, people love that motherfucker. Every podcast I've done, eight people watch it. But if I mention Rogan, it gets like a, ta- a thousand more views. But uh, yeah, he, it's, he's a cool dude. And he's kind of, I think he's like the future of podcasting. I, I, it bugs me how much people give him shit, you know, because obviously he's successful and he did it his own way. And he's a white guy with muscles and tattoos and a shaved head. Mm-hmm. So people are like, fuck this guy. But I'm like, he's one of the sweetest, most giving people. And, yeah, he laughs at a uh, blowjob joke every now and then, but who doesn't? Yeah, I, th- I don't know. I, I just, ah, I don't I think know. I love the guy. As a as a listener for many years, I just feel like he's got a good heart and is and he's got, yeah, he's got the best intentions. He's not trying to like hurt anybody's feelings or anything. And it's it's just it's just it's like crabs in a bucket mentality. Anytime somebody's at top, people want to like grab the person down to hoist themselves right. up. It's like you know and. The irony is he's when everybody describes like what an open minded, progressive person is, he's what they're describing. But I think because of mm-hmm. his look, people pull back on him like who who else has an alt right guy on and then a liberal scientist on or a right, right, right. doctor and then a, a fucking ISIS member and then a comedian <laughs> and then an MMA guy <laughs> and then a, exactly. A, you know, a, a meditation expert and then a fucking Nazi like that's cool. <laughs> that's fun. It is. And, it's and and we they always use these uh, weird clips like we got to take down Rogan. Hey, let's watch this clip. But I'm like, he yeah, but you're you have a clip of him talking to a, an all right guy. And if you listen, you might learn something mm-hmm. that you didn't know. And we wouldn't have that if he didn't interview the guy. I don't know. It's just it's all right there. I'm not that smart. So why do I know this? Right. Ah. Yeah, it's 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 healthy i feel like to listen to different perspectives like there, there's been a few guys he has had on recently i don't necessarily agree with but it was interesting sure. to hear the way they think and in, in their perspectives and how they piece information together and stuff it's you know yes i, don't yes. Know, I think people, uh, people always say, I, I can't believe he's giving this person a platform and I'm, and I'm like well if you hate the guy so much let listen to the episode right and right. use this shit against him he's he's mm-hmm. giving you free ammo and you would yes. have the free ammo if a guy like Joe didn't have him on. Like, just because he's on Joe Rogan doesn't mean he's going to be a huge success now. This guy's already obviously interesting. Whether you like the guy or not, he's interesting. That's why he's on the show. And you get to hear, I mean, how great would, would it be to hear from your enemy? You know, I don't know who our enemy is. Uh, ben Laden? I know he's dead, but like, wouldn't you love to hear Ben Laden talk on a podcast? <laughs> yes. I'm not on a, a fan. Ship. Yeah, but I want a shitty VHS tape. Yeah, I mean, we, I watched every ISIS video because I go, this guy's dangerous. He's cutting our heads off. Yeah, I'm that's, watching. That's what I was gonna say. It's like it's good, not radio. It's it's fucking good uh, content. It's like yeah. it's, it's it's helpful. Little, it's important. Yeah, yeah. I always yeah, I, yeah. Le- I mean, he's full of facts. Uh, Joe, he's just mm. he's you're always learning something if you're watching. Oh, completely. I mean, he. I hate to say it, this sounds so cliche, but he's like changed the country in a way because, you know, when somebody goes on Fallon, nobody gives a fuck. Because if you go, hey, Fallon, I got a hand job the other day, he's going to go, oh, my God, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <I know. laughs> well, what are, you, what are you, a four-year-old? Like, I'm trying to talk to you as an adult, you know, like you've heard of hand jobs, you've gotten one before, I'm sure. And if I bring it up, and I get it, it's NBC, but like. What are we going to get out of that interview? That's not a conversation. Nothing. Yeah. You know, no one watches with, with Rogan, it either. Yeah, no one watches it unless you're. You get fifty thousand, fifty thousand views on a on a yeah. YouTube video. No one, nobody's watching it. But exactly. yeah, we got the internet. We have all this great exposure and this great content. Why yeah. the fuck we watch some phony filibuster bullshit where somebody's giggling at a beer pong tournament with Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> 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 Who wants to see that? Who is watching that? I, I don't know. Kids, uh, Mormons, I don't know. Yeah. Now I'm too yeah. young to to remember Johnny Carson or anything, but w- was there like an element of risky danger and 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 
to, to those shows back in the 60s where it seemed like totally. it was like, oh, it's risque to watch this because it doesn't totally. seem risque at all to watch late night now, you know? No, now it's flipped. It's gone the other way where late, late night used to be like, have a, have a high ball, you know, put on a suit and uh, flirt with uh, Farrah Fawcett. But now it's become like, it's become daytime TV. It's more like The View now or Ellen. But back in the day, it was like, first of all, everybody went to bed at 930 in the 60s or whatever. And, uh, you know, so just being up that late was interesting. And, you know, Ed McMahon is hammered and uh, there's a, a prostitute joke or whatever the hell it was. And it was like, first of all, it was the only thing on TV at the time. So that mm-hmm. helps. There's three channels. But it was like adult time. America can come together and watch this and. That was back when a celebrity was a fucking celebrity, you know. They had Elvis on or Frank Sinatra or Richard Pryor or Sammy Davis Jr., whoever it was. And you had to watch because you're like, this is crazy. And then everybody talked about it at work the next day or at school or whatever it is. So it was a different time. And now we have so much shit that we're like, why would I watch something that doesn't matter? Yeah, I think that um, – and that's what – I guess that is a good comparison. Rogan probably is like the Johnny Carson. Oh yeah. Of now oh, yeah. because it is, like, oh, when you easily. watch it, you feel connected to like, you know, that millions of people are watching this and this is like a, it adds a level of intensity to in yes. you know, like electricity. And you got the, you got the Rogan bump too, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got the bump for sure. And uh, here's the thing that really bugs me is, Oh shit. I forgot what I was going to say again. Hold on. I had a brain queef. It'll come back. Ah! Oh, I got it. I got it all this tweeting and this guy sucks and he should kill himself and this guy's a piece of shit and he's a fucking ass whatever eventually some guy's gonna kill himself and whenever somebody does kill Mm -hmm. themselves they always go all the all the same people who tweet it go hey if you're having trouble reach out if you're Uh. depressed (laughs) make a phone call we're here depression is real mental illness is real it's like hey you fucking cunts he's killed himself because you you didn't stop yelling at him (laughs) like what are you kidding now you're saying reach out and we tried to reach out Uh, i tried to favorite a tweet you yelled at me like what the fuck (laughs) it's the only it's reckless we only care about you if you're dead (laughs) yeah Yeah. exactly but i like i wonder how much of twitter is fueled and manipulated by like say the russian bots or other organizations that are hiring people to muddy the waters of of conversation and add discourse to certain things yeah that's a good i i don't know i mean that's terrifying in its own right but even if the bots are starting it the 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 other people are finishing it yeah so it's contagious i, I don't know way. it's just changed so much like it's weird because when i started comedy me and another comic would be talking at a coffee shop and then a, the waiter would walk up and you go hey shut up civilian don't don't talk like don't make every AIDS, abortion and cancer joke and Holocaust and this and that, because it's a it's a regular person. Now, two comics are talking and another comic walks up and you go, hey, hey, shut up. You never oh, my know God. This guy. And you're like, wow. How, when did that happen? When did comics start getting mad at other comics? And look, look, if you, I get if you're saying the N word uh, uh, every 10 seconds on a podcast. OK, maybe this guy's got some issues and we should, you know, uh, distance ourselves. But like. If I make a, a Holocaust joke, it's just weird that another comic might be like, whoa, whoa, I'm going to blog about this on Monday when you leave Philadelphia. And you're like, what? what? I thought we were on the same team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did that happen? I don't it, know. I think it's Twitter. It has to be. Like, how does someone like Shane Gillis get get fired from Saturday Night Live or not even get the opportunity, but then... We have our own president saying worse things about China. <laughs> you know why? Because you can get Shane Gillis fired and you can't get Trump fired. Uh, so there's results with it. So it's more satisfying. And look, the guy said a racial slur. But but here's the thing is so have all these other big comics that you love. They've said horrible things, but it was just happened to be 10 years ago. And maybe it was on VHS yeah. and not online. That's so accessible or you like them or they're on your team so you don't want to out them none Mm -hmm. of it is uh, none of it adds up and none of it is consistent and then context of the time plays into a lot of things too bad timing yes when comedy used to be like shock value people would just 
purposely right. say the horrible thing, knowing that it's horrible, not, not intending it to hurt anyone's feelings, but the fact that it was shocking was what was humorous. But then for people now looking back at that, digging it up, they're like, what the hell did this guy say? They're just looking at it right. in writing without the context. If you watch like Don yeah. Rickles now, people be like, what? Oh, how did yeah. how did he say that on TV? Oh, like, well, completely. people weren't so butthurt back then. They, they, they saw a joke and knew it was a joke. Well, here's the thing is people were butthurt back then but they didn't have an outlet you know like the soccer right. mom or the religious guy would write a letter and you'd burn it so you'd use it to light your cigar you know but, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. but now they have a an outlet and then i think the allure of being a hero and saving the day and putting down a racist is so tempting and so enticing that i think they it clouds them a little bit and they go i don't care if this guy's a human being and about to have the best opportunity of his life on snl this fucking poor pick from pennsylvania shane gillis is about to have the fucking sorry the wind is god is angry but uh (laughs) he's about to have the biggest moment of his life and we're going to take that away from him because he made a he said a word on a podcast behind a paywall and it's like he's a human being and he's hilarious he's really funny and he was hired by a black guy so it's like do you realize what you're doing? And I know you think you're saving the world, but you're just making us all angrier and you're going to help Trump win again. Yeah, exactly. And that was fake outrage. Yeah. That was one of those situations where it was a, wasn't it another comedian that, that like dug up the, or Uh, quote unquote comedian. Quote unquote comedian. Yeah. Quote unquote. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a bummer. It's, I guess it's a nice way to stay in the walls of comedy, you know, because you're like, ruining a comedian so you're like kind of in com- I, I don't know it's just it's all very sad and ah i don't know it bums me out and i i contemplate suicide and uh, <laughs> not really not really but you know reach out <laughs> <laughs> there you go nice um back. What, what do you think about those those videos of like you know the karens being racist in public and then getting their losing their jobs the same day and and or the kens or what do you think about all that stuff i think that's dangerous too look there's a bunch of scary white ladies out there i'm a white guy (laughs) and i've been yelled at by country white women since i was two years old you know my mom's friends or hey put that down how dare you and all that shit and uh you're like man what's wrong with this lady why is she so mean but look, here's the thing. I've been yelled at by black ladies, too, and black men and white men and black women. And I think there's fucked up people in every group. Uh, I think I do think Bill Burr has a point with that whole like women can't get hit. So they're a little more uh, outgoing with their anger. And like how many times I got choked out, you know, not too long ago for saying some fucked up shit. And it was scary and it hurt and all that, but like I deserved it and I didn't do it again. So I feel like that it was a guy on guy thing. And I just feel like, yeah, I I don't love the Karen thing because two reasons. One, I see people trying to do it now where they like try to pull a Karen out of a lady and they have their camera ready and they're like, Hey lady, what did you say to me? And she's like, Whoa, I see the camera now. Like, you were right. being a dick and I was yelling at you and now you're going to film me and ruin my life because I'm a white woman and you're a black guy. Like, I get what you're doing. And, and a lot of a, them a are real mentally situation. Ill. Yeah, well, that too. And so that's one reason why it's, it's, it worries me because you can just ruin a white lady because she's white and you happen to be black and she didn't even say the N-word. She just did something you didn't like. Or People have altercations just because there's a racial, two different races on either side doesn't mean it's racial, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's one. And two, isn't calling a person a Karen, like that's just a new slur. Like just because it's not gook or fag or whatever, it's still a slur and it's just new. And we've gotten behind it because it's, it's a white woman. So it's kind of okay to hate, but it's still like, you're just doing what bad people do. Right. Uh, it's like, to we're trying to, we're trying to fight bigotry, but then people are yes. being bigoted in, yes. in a different right. way. And yeah, it's look, not I'm, really, it's not helping really. No, I mean, look, I get it. Some people are twats and douches and we need to take them down. But like the Karen thing or all cops are bad or all black people are criminals. All of these are just generalizations through ignorance. You know, like Karen is mm. funny. I've used the punchline, but again, I don't, I don't give a shit about stuff. But I'm just saying if these people are going to be consistent... <laughs> Karen is just a new slur. So I'm like, well, which one is it? Are we allowed to call people 
can I call you a, a whatever because you're doing this thing? And I mean, you used to get in trouble for saying you people. What's the difference between you people and uh, Karen? Really? Mm -hmm. Am I, I making think sense? Yeah, you're making perfect all right, sense. All right. I, I think it's because white women are oppressed. Is it oppressed? And uh, so uh -huh. they're, you know, they see them as it's okay to pick on a Karen because she's a white lady and she, you know, I don't well, know. Wait, I thought they were oppressed. I thought it was, uh, you know, white women that don't have the same opportunities as a man and uh, they get raped and they get assaulted and mansplaining. <laughs> uh, which true, one? I thought yeah. they were Some, Someone so needs like, to make like a food pyramid but for year. oppression. <laughs> they've made one they've made one. Oh, really we all know the period uh, period the pyramid <laughs> we all know the pyramid it's we know the white, period too white men are on the bottom rich white men are way on the bottom you're allowed to say anything to them and then you got like i think black is up the top and jew is weirdly down in the middle even though they've been fucking put in ovens <laughs> you know like <laughs> it's all very strange yeah. like the hierarchy then like Trans is way up there, yeah. but black but, trans is even higher than that. Then if you're in a wheelchair, you're, you're but then all who, over the road. But who determines that? Like who's picking <laughs> it's like someone's picking favorites. Like who who gets the 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 ability to be able to pick who's on what level and or, you know? That's very interesting. That's a good question. I don't know who picked it, but you just kind of know it. It's in you. Like it's almost innate where you go, I think you you base it off of uh who's doing the best and who's struggling in life and how you actually feel. I think a lot of it is your perception of that group. You know, they go, hey, don't talk about that group there. That's mean. And you're like, well, why is it mean? I don't find them any less below me, but you do. You, know, you see what I'm saying? Like, uh, yeah. oh, wait, mm. you made a fat joke. That's horrible. That's oppression. I'm like, well, why is being fat so bad? I thought big was beautiful. Like, obviously, right, you think right, it's right. bad. So if you think it's bad, maybe you're the oppressor. You know, and maybe the, uh, the impressing, impressing is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah, yeah, because people are, are confident. Like fat, fat people are very confident, and a lot of them yeah. are happy with themselves. A little yeah. too confident sometimes. It's all, <laughs> well, it, it kind of shows it. It's all silly. Like, okay, fat is beautiful, whatever. Do whatever you want with your body. But then when you lose weight, everybody applauds you and throws you a party. And you're like, but I thought it was good. And then now you're happy I lost weight. But then when Adele lost weight, we all hate her because we liked her better fat. But I thought, it's your body, your choice. Like it doesn't, none of it adds up. And I, yeah, I, they I act picture, I'm sorry. I picture people listening to this and going, I fucking hate this guy. And he's, <laughs> he's a cunt and he's, he's stepping all over this shit. But I'm like, I just want to understand. I just want to get it right. I'm not a bad guy. And I feel like it's so easy to paint someone as a bad guy if they don't agree with you fully. And that's what it's a scary time. All right. You no, go. sorry. No, 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 you're not wrong. I mean, uh, people, people were upset at Adele that she lost yeah. weight which is like, nice. they were legitimately upset at her for for making her body healthier <laughs> i know isn't that weird and then <laughs> Not, i thought it was yeah. like you can do whatever you want with your body it's your body have fun you're like okay well i'm gonna lose all this weight and they go what are you kidding you are a fat kingdom what do you you are a fat <laughs> leader we need you <laughs> exactly and don't we don't want to keep we don't want to keep you too long uh mark uh no thanks, you're, uh, well, how long we've we been on here uh, about i don't know 45 minutes or so all right well you want to awesome, round out man. the hour i got i got uh all right perfect uh, i'm very Absolutely. lonely <laughs> yeah so are we <laughs> there's not all a lot right. going on yeah so they they just close went back to closing the bars and stuff here in florida it's we're, mm. we're going backwards uh what, what do you yeah. what do you think about florida how, how do you like it what what do you do you have any opinions on florida florida man or floridians or anything I love Florida. I just, I like, I mean, you guys know your own reputation with the fucking <laughs> wild and crazy only in Florida, the, you know, bath it's, salts and uh, Pulse nightclub oh yeah. or whatever the hell. But, uh, a I lot just, of meth. Yeah, a lot of meth, a lot of gators and a lot of Jews and a lot of rich people. It's quite a gumbo of, of nuttiness down there. And I fucking love it. And I love the, the people and i love the, the shooting pistols in the air while wearing hawaiian shirt and a, <laughs> you know you got a blood-stained no fat chicks t-shirt and a condom filled with blow in your pocket and flip flops on i love it it's great holy it's fun. shit that was accurate <laughs> yeah i've been there so many times to go there as a kid and you know I've, i know tom thumb he sold me some angel dust and uh yeah i've been mm. to destin and tampa and pensacola and jacksonville and Miami and it's all great. It's all cuckoo bananas down there, but 
it's got a vibe of like we don't give a fuck but also if you come on my lawn i'll kill you with a spear <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there's a lot of cities, a lot of good cities in Florida. Great cities, great cities. We got a bunch of them. And Uh, beautiful people, too, by the way. You guys don't get your due. Like, this gorgeous, beachy, blonde women and then, like, cool dudes or, like, tall guys in shorts and great legs. I feel like you haven't been to Daytona. Um, <laughs> I think I have. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I went for spring break and oh, like, those are fro- those are all those are all uh, uh, tourists. Yeah. Not the, oh, not the locals. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Oh. Uh, what do you miss most about like um, comedy in general or touring or what? What do you? Oh what man, you well, like? I mean, I just love comedy so much. It's my favorite thing, and so that sucks. I miss working on the new bit. I love when the new bit clicks and you feel it and you're in the middle of fucking Illinois and you're like, Oh, I feel so great. I created a new joke and nobody knows you. Nobody cares. Mm. Every weekend is an adventure. You get to meet the new opener. You, you see a new club, you have a new audience here. It's this new audience gets to see your, your act for the first time. And some guys like I, I heard about you on a podcast with three weird guys and one guy never talked and uh, you know, <laughs> So that whole thing, and <laughs> then you get to meet the guy, and they, they show you the cool bar after. This is our favorite dive bar. It's been here since 1908, and, you know, uh, fucking Walt Whitman blew a guy here and then killed himself. And you're like, whoa, that's crazy. And uh, just all that stuff. And here's our famous pizza. And then you go hiking, and then you watch a baseball game in the minor leagues and get drunk wow. during the day and then try to come back home, take a shower, and do two shows that night while you got to – day hangover and then you get drunk all over again and yeah it's the best you miss doing uh miss doing the radio (laughs) no i hate radio (laughs) i don't mind it once i'm in the seat and the mics heat up and you say something funny that's like half funny and they just die laughing and you're like this ain't so bad you know you get the shitty coffee and they got the weird taco sponsor who comes in and he gives you the tacos but uh no it sucks Uh, getting up what, what was that one? Was it Cincinnati or, or Cleveland or something where you, you were messing with the uh, <laughs> the news anchor the whole time? Yes. And make, oh, yeah. Making yeah. Her crack. That's, uh, that's Cleveland. a classic. Cleveland, that's a classic. That's right. oh, yeah, man. that was that was one of those random things that, you know, I've done a million <laughs> late night shows. Nobody saw them. And then I do this thing and it blows up, went viral. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this was at seven in the morning. I'm talking to some random lady in Cleveland <laughs> and it got shared all over the place and I got a ton of new followers from it. And then I'm like buying a new suit for Fallon. I'm, I'm polishing the act for six months and doing my five minutes and getting ready and nobody sees it. Then I think we in front of a 30 year old and people are like, this is amazing. <laughs> that was a real eye opener for show business. Well, it's just like, you're so expect in those interviews to have just the typical questions and then the typical right. answers and to see that and just to see how she reacted was just so much fun yeah no she's the real hero in that she's the yeah. great sport good egg funny cool um rolled with it i mean i've been kicked out of many interviews so <laughs> that was uh <laughs> that was a real treat she was awesome so is that is that like what you're do you go in with the goal of trying to get kicked out and then this one just happened to like Honestly, no, I'm, I'm not a, like a fan. I never got those comics who are like, I walked half the room. I'm a badass. I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> being edgy or whatever and dark and keeping them is the skill. Yeah. You know? like, uh, so I'm not trying to walk out. I don't want to be there. It's at eight in the morning. I'm hungover. I'm gay. I don't want to do it, but <laughs> yes, I still a have little to be gay. myself. And that's the thing they don't realize. They're like, hey, you're a comedian. You talk about pedophiles for 20 minutes, and now we want you to come in here and play straight as an arrow. And you're like, I just can't. You got you got a camera on me. I, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't want to do that. And you get what you pay for, and I'm going to do my thing. So I'm sorry if you hate me ahead of time, but this is what I do. And I'm still a comedian. Yeah. I'm not like a jukebox that can just go, all right, let me turn on the uh, TV 8 in the morning channel no, I'm fucking still me. So yeah, I get thrown you out for being me. Yeah, I can't. I can't change. You would I'm think autistic. people would want to see you as you were. I feel like it's a better promotion if you are yourself and talking about queefs. But they're just worried about their bottom line. They got a, a strawberry jam sponsorship that's wholesome. It's got <laughs> grandma, grandma's on the on the face of it, you know. So they can't uh, <laughs> they can't take any chances with me saying uh, Jew face or whatever. 
<laughs> yeah, it doesn't reach your demographic. <laughs> no, but here's the thing. I sold out every show. I wasn't a sellout. Well, that's comic. what it's I all about. Every show that night from that, that Cleveland thing. So it worked. Because yeah. of her. She delivered, baby. <laughs> that's what the networks don't realize. I'm talking Netflix, uh, HBO, whatever it is. They used to get this. And now everybody's running scared. But they used to get it. Like, let the guy do what he does and or the gal and let them do what they do and that'll be the art look, look at tarantino imagine if the mm-hmm. film studio was like yeah that uh anal rape scene with bing Ray. right can we lose that like no that's him that's what he does exactly now, yeah. everybody's so scared of like losing that sponsor or you know whatever's not going to get on board and we're going to lose our sweeps and whatever the fuck i don't know tv lingo but yeah, yeah it's, it's like, bad for so comedy it. it's bad it's horrible it's, it's horrible it's art. Hit- it's hind- yeah, it hinder it hinders like your creativity. Like yes. Yeah. And I think and that's that- where uh Andrew Schultz doing his thing is is yes. really inspiring for young yes. comedians and, and everybody in general just to see that you could create your own thing and have it be awesome without right. there right. being a bunch of you know suits running around and telling you what to do and, and, and sponsorships and all that stuff. Completely, completely. And it's so funny because it's it's all right there in front of you, but I think they Look, and I get it. You got to play the game sometimes, you know, like if you want to be on the Tonight Show, you got to be clean or else you can't be on the Tonight Show. I get that. It's your show, your rules. Mm -hmm. But it's weird when they when a guy has his thing or a girl has their thing like Schultz and they go, hey, let's buy this. But we just want to tweak it a little bit so the uh, we can sell dog food. And you go, but then no one's going to watch if you tweak it. And they go, that's a little tweak. And so I get it. I get their their plight. But. You can't tell me you like Richard Pryor and yeah. then try to put him on. Uh, you you got to trust chopped. the chef. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so exactly. Schultz, Schultz, Schultz probably wouldn't. I mean, I like the platform he has right now, but if he's offered something on TV, he's got to take it, right? No, no. That's no. the beauty. He, he's too smart for that. He knows right, to good, stay yeah. right where he is and he's making, I think he's making YouTube money and Patreon oh, okay. money and he's figured it out. And, I'm sure they, I, I haven't talked to him about it, but I'm sure they've come a calling and uh, because all they care about is numbers. So if the numbers are good, they'll come, which is so funny because him, me, all of most guys I know who are funny, we've been knocking on their door for 10 years going, Hey, p- please put us on TV. We'll do anything. Uh, and they go, no, nah, who are you? Call me when you got uh, your game in a wheelchair. And you're like, all right, shit. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, but you got to do one of the two. <laughs> but why would he go with them? If he goes with them, it'll only be downhill. Sure. He'll make a, yeah. he'll make a couple bucks out of the gate because there's some signing deal, but the product's going to suffer and the whole thing's going to go to hell. So I think he's doing it right. And I hope he, I hope he sticks to his guns and I, I think he will because he's he's that kind of guy. Yeah, I think he yeah. will too. It's yeah, uh it's, it's exciting fucking to see. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about the news. I don't watch the news. I'm not smart, but I watch that show and I'm like, this all makes sense. The, everything mm-hmm. he's saying is he's playing both sides, he's going neutral right down the middle, he's just playing it yep. funny and and straight. Like he's just playing like this is what's happening. Whereas everything yeah. else you go, okay, I watched that. Uh, I think I got half of it. Then you got to watch another news channel. Like, oh, I didn't know about that part. I'm like, why do I have to watch two news channels? Isn't that yep. weird? Yep, mm-hmm. yeah. What a, what yep. a country. We're two narratives. Right. You got to put it together yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. a new skill. It's like we all have journalism degrees now because we had to fucking yeah. watch nine shows and take notes and do a pie chart and get a whiteboard out. And now I got an Excel spreadsheet of the news. I'm like, <laughs> what are we doing? The news used to be a half hour on TV, and that was it. And I think I feel like Andrew Schultz kind of his thing better fills the void for John Stewart leaving the Daily Show. I feel yeah, like. yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Stewart was great. We all loved Stewart, yeah, and he, he kept it funny. And I don't know, he would have uh, weirdos on more. I feel like he would have the bad guys, quote unquote, on. He would have the yeah. good guys on. He didn't just blow mm-hmm. everybody. He actually had points and questions. And I, I just yep. feel like everybody's running scared. And the whole point of comedy is to kind of keep it honest. That's what funny is, is basically just saying the truth. Yep. And uh, no one can say the truth now. So therefore, by uh, the laws of physics, comedy can't survive. Shit. <laughs> We're all fucked. Oh, no. Well, that's why it's all going to YouTube, because it's like punk rock. Nobody's going to sign this person, so they'll put out their own, they'll print their own album, they'll go to the fucking 
back room bar and crank it out. Uh, it's word of mouth goes around and they they fuck the man, fuck the government, rage against my asshole and all this shit. <laughs> and uh, then the suits go, hey, this guy's got a full house. Let's try to sell this shit. And then the cycle continues. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, got to break mean, it. Yeah, hopefully, you know, hopefully Schultz doesn't sell out like a like a like a rock band would. Next thing you know, he's having <laughs> like uh, you know Justin Bieber on or, or whatever little current I mean, pop star he, is. He might do it a little because it helps more eyeballs get on the show, but I don't think he'll ever give in to the uh, like the the scaredness. Like I better play this role or else I'm fired. Right. He'll never mm-hmm. do that, but he might have a Bieber on or a fucking Kanye yeah. on just because it's like. This elevates his platform. It elevates his mm-hmm. status a little bit. I feel like, like Chappelle with, was always really good at t- balancing that without selling out, yeah, kind of just doing whatever yeah. he wants, and then finding success. Yeah. In that. Could yeah. Chappelle be on? Should Chappelle, sh- could that show be on like today? You think? I don't know. I don't know. It's. I mean, as a black guy, I think you can get away with a lot more. But I mean, he even said when he was on the air, he would get bags of hate mail bags Ooh. but that again that was back when hate mail was just throwing the garbageable <laughs> and then now it's tweetable and right so i don't know it might get canceled a lot sooner than it did hmm. but i don't know america seemed to love it it made comedy central a lot of money it made him a lot of money it made him a lot of fame so like oh yeah why do we have to ruin everything i mean hamilton is now in, in like hot water i'm like hamilton you really Why? want to take all those jobs away? Because it's like problematic. I don't know. I just saw my think it's, about what, it today. Isn't it like Hamilton? They're like glorifying the, the forefathers who also <laughs> all own slaves. But then they're yeah. rapping and then there's a bunch of, you know, I guess theater people running around rapping, which is kind of weird. And yeah, You really want to take jobs from all those black people singing and like that right. Lewin Will Miranda guy. He's like a Puerto Rican. I, I don't know. I'm not saying that makes them excusable but i'm just saying like what's the end game should we just yep. live we're in watching... a live in a shoebox and and drink cyanide <laughs> we're watching <laughs> the snake eat its own tail at this point i think so and you know what's going to happen and i'm already going to get hell for this i'm sure but here's what's going to happen a bunch of people are gonna turn at some point i think a bunch of people maybe a year maybe five years a bunch of people are going to flip and kind of pretend like all this shit didn't happen and I hope that people go, oh, whoa, 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 no, no, you were one of the people who wanted to cancel everything. Mm-hmm. You're out. We, we can't, they're going to, I think they're going to, it's going to be, be uncool. It's going to be uncool to be that way, I think, eventually. Everything kind of has a yeah. cycle and, a, and a, a spin cycle where it has to go through the wash and yeah. the wash has got to end. It's kind of like McCarthyism in a little yes, way, right? People are getting exactly. canceled and blackballed or blacklisted or whatever. Uh, right, it seems right. kind of reminiscent of that. Oh, but that's completely. why I have that's why I have hope for comedy is because there is enough there are enough people and there are enough fans that see through that shit and don't want that at all. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think because uh, the real people who are listening and coming to shows and watching comedy fans, comedy fans, they like it. They they want it oh, yeah. to be horrific and whatever and like they seem to be happy with it. But it's just this kind of elite and this like. I don't know. Uh, don't don't have you don't have fun, or I'll come and get you. you know, like I, I don't know. It just feels like those people are the ones trying to stop everything. They, yeah, they, yeah. They, the priest in Footloose, who's like, hey, hey you can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna dance. That's why it's so disheartening that people within the comedy world. There should know, be some kind of hey, we're all on the same team here. Yes, he was- that's, that's the other thing I hate is they go, hey. You, you're all about free speech. And you're, we're like, yeah. And they're like, well, we should be allowed to tell you you suck. And I'm like, you can, but you can't take away my job. They always, right. they always do that. They always go, oh, what's the big deal? It's free speech. How come I can't tell you you suck, but you can tell me your joke? And I'm like, you can't tell me you suck, but you can't call me a fucking racist because you don't know me. This is a joke. Yeah, I made a black joke, but it, <sighs> it just involves black people. I don't hate them, nor <clears throat> am I a politician making laws or passing a bill like, why do you want yeah. just because you don't like something doesn't mean it should go away. Like, yeah, like if say, you, say if you like IPAs and then the brewer yeah. makes a sour and then you're like, this sour sucks. I'm, 
you, yes. Let's get this guy fired. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> and it's weird that they can't see that. Like, yeah, you can tell me I suck. My dad tells me I suck all day long. I don't, I don't kill him. <laughs> you know, like, or he doesn't kill me. I should say it, it, it doesn't make any sense, and it, it's just very entitled too. Like, I don't approve of this. Get rid of it. Well, what are you, a sultan? Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> you burn your mouth on some hot sauce, so we all got to lose Tabasco. It's okay. <laughs> right. Just, just don't listen. Turn it off. Block me. Go, don't go to the show. It's not that hard. Yeah, you literally don't have to listen at all. You don't have to watch. Yeah. Mm. And Maybe. literally on YouTube, you literally have to, you have to look up the person to see them now. Cool. I know. I'm like, I've hung out with Shane Gillis, and Asian people think it's hilarious to go up to him and get a photo with him. <laughs> you know, like, which just says it all. Like, look, it's not that serious. Yeah, look, I'm not saying racial slurs are okay and whatever, but like, some people get that he's attempting humor, and uh, it's not the end of the world. We got real problems, but that's the thing. Maybe they don't. These people who are so mad, maybe they don't have real problems, and so they have to create them. Or they actually hate themselves, so they have to get, ruin your life. I, I don't know. We could dig real deep with this shit, but mm. it's just a bummer, and it's, uh, I hope it goes away, and I hope people see what they're doing. It's so reckless and mean. It's mean. It's bullying, ironically. It really is like bullet, like uh, like uh, packing it on, like that mob mentality, and like yes, um, it's 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 scary. I, I'd be scared. If yeah, was, yeah. It makes you just you. not want to makes you <laughs> yeah. not want to do do anything public or put anything out or express yourself or anything. Well, right. Like, or like, try anything new. The yeah. idea that comedy clubs look like speakeasies, I think that is kind of it might be more important than we think. Like comedy maybe should is is for these places where people understand the context where you go into this place, everyone's like, hey, we're just we're where's where we can see say horrible things that are funny or whatever. When you leave, you you know. It's like it's like going into a swingers party or something. Yeah, like that. you know, don't tell yeah. anyone about it afterwards. But now that there's YouTube and Twitter, like people right. who aren't looking for comedy, all of a sudden just see a clip in the middle of their day while they're at work. Yeah, they're like, what right. the hell? Like, what is this? You know? Yeah, they're I looking in the so. windows. Uh, yeah, like Judd Apatow. I got so upset at Judd Apatow. I, I get I get very emotional about. This. He was on Jim and Sam, mm -hmm. and he was bashing Louie. For uh, and oh, then Pete really, Holmes, yeah. Pete Holmes too jumped on, bashing him for right. the for uh, the the sh school shooter joke. Right. And I'm like, dude, wh why say anything? And then it was like a twenty. And Jim, Jim did a great job defending him, but like, why? Like, what is it? What is it hurting you if he if he's attempting to 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 tell a new joke? Well, How's it hurting weird... Judd Apatow? I agree with you, and it's that weird thing of like. Hey, you can joke whatever you want about. I have a great sense of humor. Feel free, but whoa, whoa, but. that thing, I can't. And you're like, I'm sorry, man. It's just, I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter that this bothers you. If if we take that away, we got to take it all away, and we don't want to do that. And you don't want to do that yeah. because it, you're it, a yeah. comic as well. And where does it end? You know. So it's like that Bill Burr thing. All of a sudden, 40 minutes of jokes, and then one thing you don't agree with. That's a statement. You know, right, like, right, 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 right. And I have a feeling that if Louis did that same joke ten years ago when he was on top, everyone would be praising I, him for how brilliant I, he is. I think you're right. I think oh, you're yeah. completely non -issue. right. Non-issue, be a non-issue. Non I mean, he, he did a 9/11 joke. What's the difference? That both tragedies where bunch yeah, of people man. died. Mm -hmm. Sure, one is involving kids, but I'm sure some kids died on 9/11. Also, Louis has mm -hmm. kids, so he gets the yeah. severity of it. It's a fucking joke. Maybe it was the fat joke part of it that people were. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. that was the funniest part of it. <laughs> Wait a minute. How many of there are are there of you? Oh, there's there's me. I'm Ramon Maledo. Okay. Hey, Ramon. And there's and uh, Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. Just is that two it? Of us. Oh, yeah, that's just two of us. Nine of you. Oh, <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. I, no. That's why I made that joke. I can't make eye contact, so I don't want to look at the screen. And I, it sounded like you guys were eight different people at one point. So uh, oh, sorry. sorry about that no. joke. Oh no, just oh, us. no worries. Right, yeah, actually, right. uh, it, it was a while ago, but I I did a a weird podcast with you and at the side splitters in Tampa in my car. And we're, there's like raccoon. Oh, yeah. Around. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was, I forgot that was about a, that. 
that was a fun time, man. That was, it feels like four years ago. It was only January. So so much shit has went down. What? <laughs> yeah. No way. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like it was like feels like three years ago at this point. Yeah. Wait, are you serious? Oh yeah. Wow, I thought that was yeah. That feels like a decade ago. We sat and it was like midnight. We sat in the car and whatever yeah. happened to that pod? Did that come out? Oh yeah, it came out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, all it's right. All there. right. It's, flo- it's floating around. I could send it your all way. Right. If you want. All right. Well, that doesn't bode well for this one. If I didn't even uh, notice the, <laughs> the blip that one made, then what the hell is this thing gonna do? Oh, I put it on the Reddit on the Reddit uh, page for the Tuesdays <laughs> and, and all that stuff. So. All right. So yeah. tell me about Reddit. You're a Reddit guy. It seems like it's just filled with uh, hatred and putrid cesspool of filth and hate and demonizing. Well, what's going well, on on that Reddit? It's uh, I think it's more civil than Facebook um because there's there's the there's the downvote so people know that if they say something that's completely stupid they'll get downvoted so Mm -hmm. but uh it's a lot of pretentious people definitely But some people might agree with the stupid thing and upvote exactly hateful stuff too but there's there does seem to be like better policing on reddit what i've seen is when someone does just do a shit post people kind of like seem to police it a little bit better oh okay i respect that i like that good good Yes. So like, like I've released podcasts on, on there, like the one um, th- that I, I did with you and then people, people liked it. People were real nice, you know, polite and all that stuff. So there wasn't any, yeah. anything weird or anything. Uh, I did. We had um, Michael layer on, we had uh, from, we had a few people from kill Tony on. Oh, okay. Okay. And yeah. For, and pe- people were polite about that and they, you know, it's like, I, I always worry cause I'm a nobody. So I'm like, Oh, great. Someone's going to just right. attack me for, for sure. even trying to do anything, you know. But look, as long as the attacks are just, you know, that's what I, I like about Reddit is they can see through the bullshit. Like they'll yep. they'll always be this artist du jour who gets like as a darling, and the, the industry loves them, and uh, the 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 Twitter world loves him or her, and they're not that good, but we have to pretend. And when they get a special, we all blow each other and all this, and you're like, yeah, but they're not that funny. Like, am I nuts? And then you go to no, Reddit, you're yeah. like, oh, they all know. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they're comedy fans. There's a, like a, so there's subreddit. So there's a comedy subreddit that's specifically for comedy fans. And they're passionate. Oh, great. Passionate great. people. So yeah. it's a good place to post. And yeah, yeah uh, you're pretty, you're pretty big, like, uh, on, wow. on the subreddit. Yeah, like, oh, no. you're, you're, you are the, like, Com- comedian that's coming out the the, the up and cut co- the next comic in that in what? that uh, community oh it's exciting God. stuff i'm blown away dude what everyone do? yeah everyone is into mark norman lately yeah it's exciting. Wow. after wow. i had Appreciate you uh, do that podcast in my car like everyone shit their pants when i told them about it they're like what the oh, fuck? Really? oh yeah oh geez this is all news to me all right well thanks fellas yeah yeah, yeah that's nice yeah <laughs> Do you have uh do you have any uh, gigs coming up that you want to plug or any show uh Zoom shows? You got Zoom mic? Sure. Well, when does this come out? Well, this is live currently, but I'll post Oh jeez. <laughs> I don't know why that that's what's the difference, you know. Yeah. Uh I tried to say it in, in the beginning. I don't know if you heard me or not. Oh, um, no, I missed. Well, it's it's but... live on Facebook, so you know a bunch of grandmas are watching. Oh, great. Um, but I'll post the RRS feed uh later tonight, and so I'll I'll be able to post it by tomorrow probably. All right. Well, yeah, this this weekend I'm in Appleton, Wisconsin, at the Skyline Comedy Club. And then I'm uh, I'm all over the road after that. A bunch of got canceled. But check out MarkNormanComedy.com. I think all the dates are up there and I'm getting to Chicago and Miami and Boston and all kinds of stuff. So check it out. Listen to my podcast and check out my YouTube page and the special. Sorry, and you have a Venmo, too, too for people who want to donate after watching your uh, special. Oh. YouTube. I got a Venmo and a PayPal. The Venmo oh. is uh, Mark Dash Norman, and the pen pal, the PayPal is uh, Here's Mark with two Ks at Yahoo. Somebody had the other Here's Mark with one K. It's not a KKK uh. thing. It's only two, <laughs> but uh, somebody had another one. So yeah, awesome. All right, awesome, well, dude. Thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was fun, and sorry if I. Uh, Jizzed all over the the lens there and and spilled too much shit. But uh, oh, no, no, it was, you were fine. It was great. All right, nothing, nothing weird. Uh, I'll right. I'll send you the link when it's all up and ready. All right, please. Thanks, fellas, and tag me in the stories and all that, and I'll retag or whatever. All righty, for sure, you definitely will. Take care. All, all right, right. take it. Praise Allah. Praise Allah. <laughs> well, that was Woo! fun, huh? That was a fucking blast. Dude.
Yeah, dude. Ooh, we finally got it. Took a few months. But, huh? uh, oh, yeah. It took a few months to get him on. Well, I think th- th- this was worked out better because w- if we had yeah. him before all this shit, we would have just not talked a lot about, to talk about. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot to talk about this time around, you know, because uh, like, yeah. everything that's going on in 2020, we we're able to talk to him about. Or if we would have had him on two months ago, it would have been like, hey, what do you think about Tiger King? Huh? What is, that guy was weird. Right. You know? Yeah. And I mean, it's we, so ref- Oh, sorry. So refreshing. Uh, or- it's refreshing to have that and that kind of honesty and like, uh, and um, yeah, you could really talk to Mark about anything. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, it was he, a blast. He, he'll go. Uh, I told him that we're alive in the beginning. I said it out loud, right? Yeah, I yeah, think right. he. he was I think he just has. He's just a that kind of anxious dude. Like thinking, okay. like it's a little different in your head. You're like, oh shit, people are watching right now. <laughs> it's like I understand that, but yeah. he didn't even know. So let's see. Just... Yeah, we'll we'll see if those uh, shows. I mean, every day he's gonna. Um, I guess I'll find out with those shows that are coming up um, if they if they stick. Yeah. Oh shit, um, man. We should we should have told him about the uh, the Zoom open mic tomorrow and be like, oh yeah, uh, 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 Steve. Uh, what's his? Uh, Steve uh, Rogers. Rogers. Yeah, Steve, Steve Rogers, Rogers is there, and you know maybe we, we got get... Rob O'Reilly. Yeah, we got the uh, the uh, Mike Peters who's watching. Uh, usually goes. Yeah, that'll be been... Mike Peters. Yeah. Yeah, he's great. That's exciting to, uh, too. And I prepared zero for uh, for uh, for the show because I was working on this Mark set. So I did have questions. Like I uh, we didn't I didn't need it at all. Obviously, we just shot the shit. But check out what I did. Can okay. you see that? Hold on. Wait. Uh, you have cue cards taped up all over the place. <laughs> so wow. I had all these questions. Uh, didn't really need it. I went to it a couple times. But it's like I think it's a similar thing that like Mark has like I like if there's a a like two seconds of silence I freak out, uh, which yeah, there wasn't, here. and that's why it's good to have that that go to thing there. Um, in my mind, I when when I'm talking about a subject, I try and have like at least two locked and loaded. Um, yeah, but but sometimes I freak out because I'll I'll have a brain fart and I'll forget the thing that was locked and loaded, you know, and I'll panic for a second and then. Yep, yep, yep. If you forget it, yeah. If you have something and like the conversation is moving and it's a good point and it goes really well with what they're saying and you lose it, which has happened to me like twice during the interview where I had something and then completely gone. But I think the key is to just, okay, I lost that thought. Let's keep listening and another off. I think the worst thing you could do is try to rack your brains to try to like, you know what I mean? So do you think our listeners would have enjoyed uh, the Joe Gibson if we had Joe Gibson on today? Or do you think they enjoyed the Mark Norman one? I think they probably enjoyed both. Okay, cool. You know, um, I think the stuff, I think the important thing we're doing is bringing attention to, especially, especially local stuff that's going on. Yeah. Um, But also I think it's important to have some comedy. Yeah, no, no, I, I mean, I comedy think... is the thing that keeps me sane. Um, yeah, yeah. And no. uh, I, I love Joe Gibson. I love everything he's doing. But I, as as far as like the comedy lineup, since Joe Gibson does comedy, I just wanted to do a little little fun dig there. Uh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Yeah. He uh he he messaged me yesterday. He says he's gonna go back to comedy. I awesome. knew that. The thing is, like with this, like a lot of people aren't going to like when comedy does come back, which I think it will. There's going to like a lot of those open micers, I think, may not come back. Um, but I guess yeah. maybe not. I mean, uh, uh, what's it? Old school still has the whole gang going on there. Mm. Um, people bombing. But that's where it's where you go to bomb is the open mic. Yeah. Uh, they're fucking harsh though the people that watch on the live stream have you ever have you ever watched old school on the live stream no they like there's like these i think they're daytona comics but they like heckle the whole show which would be fine yeah which like Uh, just typing in which would be fine oh typing in yeah i thought you meant there like they drove down from tampa (laughs) no but it would be fine if but they the comics will look at the uh live stream uh, like the comments while they're on or afterwards and um 
Ch- Chad was pretty upset about it. Um, but it's just like I don't know. I wouldn't. I if if I went, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at comments. That's like the worst. <laughs> it's it, like it looking at Twitter in a way. Like, okay, first of all, when you're going up on stage, normally it's hard to get anyone to. And it's hard to get comics to pay attention to you on stage because they're all on their phone doing their shit. So if you have comics roasting you, it's like, hey, at least they're paying attention. Maybe they could give me some like. Hey, this just guy looks like a fucking this or that. And it's like, oh, I'm going to use that. That one was actually pretty good. You, you right, could get right. butt hurt or you could use it as like a positive thing. Like, hey, these guys are paying attention. They're calling me out on this, calling me out on that. They're tagging this. It's like, all right, well, maybe I should uh, apply that. Unless That's- the people who are doing it are just unfunny comics that are just like, I don't respect that guy. Why is he trying to rip me apart for? Right, right, right. That's that's true. If, you know, even it, it that if you weren't emotional you'd say okay i'll take the good stuff that comes and then the rest of the stuff you just say well they're uh dudes that are heckling people online um on a on a on an open mic that they're not at Mm -hmm. but um it's not a you know it's it's whatever yeah it's something that would probably affect me but um, yeah for me i think it would always depend on on who it was i guess if there was a certain person that i was already maybe like kind of didn't didn't like or something i'd be like well what the fuck is this guy doing you know yeah what the fuck? but yeah it's it, it's, it could uh, be tricky or hey it could just be if that's if that's what you know going in then it's like all right yeah here we go it's it's fine yeah um but i'm gonna fuck, man yeah this was this was great i gotta this was get, a blast get some dinner going and all that stuff but uh hey now that we got mark norman on sky's the limit maybe we can get shane moss really? back on we can get yeah uh, yeah i messaged shane i'll i'll send him an email i don't know why i messaged him on instagram because he told me the best way is email so i'm a, i'm a, i'm oh. an idiot but i'll i'll email him because yeah it'd be awesome to have shane on what a good yeah, guest he posted a really good thing today on instagram all about anti-vaxxers and stuff like that i thought it was really clever and informative and and, and stuff uh yeah you know it was good. I like to talk I'll to check about that, out. that kind of stuff. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, this was this was great. Great talking to you. Great experience. Got to talk to the old the old uh, Norm Normster. So Norm, yeah, that was a blast, dude. Yeah, and we'll keep we'll uh, have some more exciting comedy shows coming up. And Heck yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, everybody. Namaste and Hare Krishna. Mwah.